I didn't get it on camera, but I dumped just that small amount of hydrogen peroxide into the large flask, and it turned the whole thing uh, amber. So it didn't take a lot of peroxide uh, to complete the change. So I'd like to try another quick test. Um, <clears throat> so I put a little bit of the uh, uh, amber liquid into this test tube. And this one contains a little bit of uh, sodium ferrocyanide in solution. And you might wonder where I would get such a chemical. Well, right here from my childhood Skillcraft chemistry set. And um, if this works as I think it might, the presence of iron in this should, when I mix the two, it should turn a blue color. So I'll give it a try. I would say that was a yes. That's some serious blue. It's so blue it's almost black. So that's a pretty good test for iron. Who would have thought? So either the uh, sodium ferrocyanide is not as toxic as it sounds, or I was lucky to survive my childhood. So meanwhile, back at the electric skillet, uh, I've let it cool down for a little while. It's still kind of warm, but uh, this is starting to thicken up. It hasn't frozen completely yet. But it's, it's definitely on the way. So I'll keep stirring that as it cools to keep it from hardening up. So I'll give it a quick temperature check here. About 140F. So when it gets down below 112 or so, and it should should start to change, according to my information. We'll see. Well, this looks like it's dry now. The totally insoluble, unreactive component. This is totally awesome gray powder. But I don't know what it is. Shouldn't really have any carbon left in it because I roasted it so so much, but there might be. Uh, I might try and do some more with that. Anyway, back to the electric skillet. I'll get another temperature reading. About 84 degrees. Ooh, and it's hard as a rock. However, around the edges where there was just a little bit left that I didn't get scraped up into the pile, it's starting to liquefy. I would assume it's pulling water right out of the air and showing its deliquescent properties. So I imagine if I let it set long enough, it would eventually all end up in as a liquid again. But for now, it's, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to break it up in this state. But it's certainly fascinating stuff to play with.
So here is the calcium chloride that I remelted because it was too hard to break up. And I washed it carefully as it cooled. And as it started to freeze, I made sure that I kept it broken up into smaller chunks. And uh, then I put it in this airtight jar. So you can still see the greenish tint from the iron impurities, but it, it makes uh, for a very interesting uh, looking substance. Well, I removed most of the water from the second uh, batch of calcium chloride, but I stopped before going all the way. I had another idea what I might do with this. Uh, I think what I'm going to do uh, is try and convert it back to calcium carbonate. I think I can do that by adding sodium carbonate to it. It should precipitate out as calcium carbonate to produce sodium chloride as a byproduct. And it also helped me get rid of some excess hydrochloric acid, which is still evident in this liquid because it, the fumes are very noticeable. So I'll put it back in the large beaker. So I prepared here a strong hot solution of sodium carbonate and I'm going to add that into this very concentrated solution of calcium chloride with the iron contaminant. I know there's excess Hydrochloric acid, that's what's, I believe that's what's causing the uh, bubbles. Looks like the iron chloride color is gone. The iron, of course, is still there. It's just some other iron compound now. I may want to apply heat to this reaction to drive it to completion if it works at all. There's a precipitate, but I can't be sure. Maybe a stir bar would be useful. So here's what I have after I've added quite a bit more water and I've dumped in all of the sodium carbonate 
heated it up, let it stir for several minutes, maybe 15, 20. Now I'm letting it settle out. And as you can see, there's a lot of precipitate in there. And uh, when that's cooled and settled more, I'll be filtering that off and keeping the precipitate and discarding um, whatever's soluble. Starting with the dirty calcium carbonate in the wood ash that I couldn't separate out until I added the hydrochloric acid converted to calcium chloride and then added sodium carbonate to convert it back to calcium carbonate. So it was a rather long way in getting there but it should be a fairly clean product knowing that I, there's still an iron contaminant and probably many other trace contaminants that I don't even know about. So now that the calcium carbonate precipitate is settled out, I'll decant off the liquid as much as I can. more water stir that up good I'll be filtering that off So now the liquid is all drained out. Let me see if I can let this dry. I may use some gentle heat to do that. So here's the calcium carbonate after it's been dried.
And now for the weigh-in. 24.24 grams. For this test, I'm going to see if this insoluble, unreactive wood ash powder loses weight when I heat it to the extreme, and if so, how much. So if I can do this carefully, weigh this. One point four seven grams. for the weigh-in after that strong roasting. expect something has decomposed or maybe if there was carbon it converted to carbon dioxide anyway that's another bit of information okay so here's a recap of what I have so far from the wood ash chemistry uh, investigation and uh, so first of all, uh, the potassium sulfate crystallized out of solution. Uh, this may look like uh, more than what you saw in the video previously, and that's correct. This is also uh, potassium sulfate that I did uh, on uh, other wood ash extractions. So really, this is a lot more than what I got from this run that I've been showing. And then we got the potassium carbonate. And then uh, when I went to the insoluble, I added the hydrochloric acid, converted to calcium chloride. And then I recovered the calcium chloride in this form. And uh, at the time I bottled it, it had a, a green, greenish, light greenish coloring. And after setting for a couple days, it's turned back to white, which is quite interesting because this bottle has not been opened and it's, it's airtight. And lastly, the calcium carbonate that I precipitated um, from some of the extra calcium chloride that I made. And uh, 
It turned out to be a very clean looking substance, although I'm sure it has impurities. And here is the remainder, the insoluble wood ash substance before it was roasted. And when I say roasted, I mean to a, as high a temperature as my propane torch would get it. And that's what this is after it's been roasted at that temperature. At this time, I have no, no idea what these two are. But for now, I'm going to... I'm going to end this video series and uh, maybe think about this some more and, and do some testing with this at a later time. So that's all for now.